I see are two things that could have happened. Either number one, the mom or the dad was very domineering over them in the house, made them clean, made them wash, made them scrub, made them do everything, and they said, when I get out of here, <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. I don't care if I'm married. I'm not going to ever do these things. Or the second thing that could have happened is they never were taught. Right. So they didn't know what to do. And that's something also that the wife needs to know before they get married. She's either going to marry someone who has an attitude against domestic cleaning, because she can find that out when she go visit him at his apartment. There you go. She'll know whether or not he can do that. <laughs> she, she'll know. Then she can make a decision whether or not she wants to get involved in that relationship or sit down and talk with him. Why is your house like this? And he, I don't know. I can't clean it up, whatever. And so, or, and then. Or, she, or his car. If yeah, is yeah. Judgy, you I'll can't get in the car because of everything else that's in it. You'll know. There's, there's going to be so many telltale signs. Yes. There's so many things that you'll be able to see to yes. determine. And I mean, vice versa as a woman too. But we're talking about the man. Uh, he does, he does not want to do domestic things. He doesn't want to wash dishes. He doesn't want to cook. He doesn't want to clean. He doesn't want to do any of that. But again, with a woman working or with children or, or she has other things that she has to do, the, the partnership comes in. That's where partnership comes in. We're going to do this. If, if, if I'm not here today, can you do this? Can you put that load of clothes in? Right. Can you do this for me? I like and there's that. nothing wrong. That, that's wonderful when you have a partnership mm. in what you're doing. And it doesn't matter who wash dishes. Right. Right. It doesn't matter who sweep the floor. That's good right. It doesn't matter who mops. It doesn't because right. this is your home. And, and I believe that the man, he may glory in his home because the wife decorates it and make it beautiful. But what greater glory would be is that you help keep it that way. You know, that's good. That's, that, that's really good. Yeah. Well, but, but that's, that's a mature couple. Let's just face it. But the younger generation uh, that, uh, like you said, grew up in a home, was never taught to wash clothes, never taught to wash dishes, never taught to take out the garbage. Dad wasn't there to teach mm -hmm. him different things. So it's difficult for them thrust in a, in a relationship, and then, of course, the spouse didn't really see the warning signs before, like you said, right. didn't actually pay attention. She right. was so caught up on, mm -hmm. on, on the way he looked or, or, <laughs> or the way she looked that right. it wasn't looking at the way they handled their home at home in mm -hmm. their bedroom, right. didn't make up their bed, trash was all over. They didn't pay any attention to that. They didn't pay any attention to how the the car was junky and trash was all in the front seat. Every time she got ready to get in the car, he had to move all the cans. Oh I won't mention what kind of cans they are, but the cans oh out of the way wow. and everything. Those are signs mm -hmm. beforehand. And yes. you, you, you know, if you don't catch that beforehand, then you turn around and marry them, and then you expect them to mm -hmm. be different. And the problem is... They'll tell you in a minute, well, you knew I was like this before I got married. Right. Mm -hmm. You knew that. And that's that true. And you, that's you fair. Knew it when I, when, and mm -hmm. so then the pressure is put on her. Well, what am I going to do? Am I going to stay in this marriage with this knucklehead? Am I going to stay in, in, this, in this marriage with, with this guy that I didn't expect this? That's when questions have to come in. If he makes the statement, you knew I was like this when we got married, then now the conversation has to come where either she's going to say, well, I really didn't know this, or even if I did know it at that time, what can we do to fix this? Right. There has to be a repair in a marriage when you see it breaking down. Right. There good has point. to be. That is a good point. Mm -hmm. That's why we're having this show during the Greatness Broadcast with Dr. Randall and Bradella Hall Walker, because you can stop. And you can examine things, mm -hmm. and you can repair what's That's going right. wrong. It exactly. doesn't have to continue to spiral out to a disaster. Right. You can put a stop to it now. You can put a stop when you measure it, when you evaluate the way things are. You can say, okay, look, this is the way it is. I knew when I married you that, um, that you were this way. But now that I've matured, now that I've grown, can we work together exactly. and correct some of the exactly. problem exactly. and have a mutual uh, respect conversation about your needs? Right. And then, of course, vice versa and hear each other. 
Don't cut each other off. That's the worst thing you can do is when a conversation is going on and uh, the person, before they get finished, you got something to say because you got thinking about what you're going to say before right. they finish saying what they're saying. And you're not communicating. Right. You have right. to let the person share their heart and listen to them. For God's sake, right. listen to what they have to say and respond based on not where you're at but where they're at. That's so right. often we respond to the conversation based on where we're at. And we just heard them pour their heart out to us, and then our conversation is about us, me, <laughs> myself, and I. And they just, un I mean, unleashed, and they exhaled so much to us. And they're like, I don't believe this. I just don't believe, I don't believe he said that. <laughs> Did he hear me? <laughs> <laughs> so in communication, you have to respond not where you're at. Excuse me. You have to respond where they're at. But that's right. We already did that. We're on the next topic. Oh, we're on the next yes. topic. Not home. That's the number, I believe it's number seven. Six. Number six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not home. Well, where are you? I'm out with the boys. <laughs> I'm out with the fellas. I'm hanging out. You know, after all, I worked all day. I want to go hang out. Hey, party. While she's at home with the kids. Mm. You're not home. Or just home by herself. Right. Or home by herself. Mm -hmm. But you're not there. And you got off work at 3 o'clock. And, and here it is, 8. Where in the world are you? Okay. And then she calls. And you won't even answer your phone. And then you wonder why you wonder why your marriage is going under. You wonder why you're having problems. You wonder why things are falling apart. You won't even answer your phone. And then you get mad at her for trying to get in touch with you. How dare, how dare you try to call me? Don't you know I'm out with the boys? I, I, you're making me look bad. They're thinking I'm henpecked or something. You ain't got no business calling me. I call you. Don't you call me. I call you. <laughs> and that kind of attitude. And then, but th we're talking about the top list of failures in a marriage. And that's one of them right there. Number six is not always away from home. Not home. I mean, just constantly in the streets. Never. And for God's sake, don't stay out all night. Don't. I know you're not doing that. Okay, men or women, be accountable with your husband or where you're at. Tell them, let them be able to find you at any given time. Any given time, that's security for them. They need to know you're all right. Anything could have happened. Somebody could have kidnapped you. Somebody could have robbed you and shot you and put you in the ditch. Now, I know I'm going to the extreme. But the fact is, they, they love you. They married you because... They wanted a relationship with you. They wanted to spend the rest of their life with you. So they married you. And so you have to be accountable to that person, your spouse. You have to be uh, respectful to them and at least check in. I mean, there's nothing wrong with checking in. You know, I know we don't want to let the boys know we're calling in to check in. I've been there and done that. But I'm here to tell you, your wife is the most important thing. And we're going to have a show uh, next week, uh, we're going to have a show, and we're going to flip the script. And, and we're going to let the wives talk about the ten top areas, where I'm talking about the ten top areas that you'll find yourself in divorce court and the failures in a marriage. We're going to have a show coming up, so you don't want to miss it. We're going to have a show with our, my darling, darling <laughs> baby, my sweet and sexy lady. Oh, I forgot I'm on Christian television. I, I lost it for a moment. But she, but she is going to uh, host that show, and I'm going to look forward to that. But it's important that you come home. Let, let it be where they know the time that you're on your way, and call them. Say, honey, I just got off work. I'm on my way in. Can't wait to see you. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Is there anything you want me to stop at the store and get? Did you need anything? Because when I get there, turn off the lights right, and light a candle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, because right. then, I mean, you done asked her if she, uh, you're being accountable. You're asking her if she need anything from the store. You let her know you'll stop and pick her up. Anything she wants, honey, anything you want. They, they just love that. And then when you get home, she's ready to uh, massage your back and, and your feet. And, and no telling where it might go from there. Hey, Amen. I don't want to get rated X here, but, it, <laughs> but but the fact is, it's going to take you being the man as the leader and and being accountable for your actions and call and, and let them know. And when, if you're out with the boys, say I'm going out for an hour. And for God's sake, if you say you're going to be gone for an hour, come back home in an hour. Don't say uh, I'll be back in an hour and three hours later she can't find you. Okay, and then you, you the phone you just ringing off the hook, and then you then you turn it off and don't even answer it, and it goes to voicemail. What is she supposed to think? Okay, and then you wonder what why then then you got served divorce papers. You want to know why? You're like, why did I get these papers? I've been a good husband. Okay, and in reality, you did it to yourself. So as my wife alluded to earlier. If some of these are, are in your life, it's time to evaluate, and you can correct them now. You don't have to continue to let it spiral and continue. If you can relate to any of these that we talked about in these areas of, of your marriage going into a spiral out of control and ending up in divorce court, you can put a stop to it by pulling together and say, let's have a conversation on how we can make things better. Bidella? That's good. That's good. What's really happening here is that there's a habit that's never been broken. Uh, this man was doing all that before he got married, running around, not coming in or whatever, no discipline in his life, and then he got married and forgot to break that habit. And so now it's, it's, it's like the marriage is now on a fade out because mm. she's not going to take it too much longer. He'll come home eventually by himself yes. because she just, what is she going to do? You left her there and I'm, I'm talking, let, let's not even talk about with the children. Let's just talk about a woman by herself. She's married this man. They have no children. He's still hanging out with the guys, never home, come in when he feels like he get upset. And there she is like, what did, what happened? What did I get into? Eventually she's gone. Mm. She's going to either start hanging out too. Right. Or she's just going to walk away. So you right. got to fade out in your marriage. Yeah, there was a song mm -hmm. that I, back in the day, y'all too young to remember this, but you said, Who's making love to your old lady while you were out making love? <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. It's, yeah gonna, so, so it's a problem. It, it's definitely a problem. And, and just like you said, if she's left alone, then too of, long. Yeah, then of course, with us already always listening to the voice in our head, you know the enemy going to feed her thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, the loneliness going to set in, you know, and, and she's going to uh, feel like, wow, I, I need some attention. And then next thing you know, somebody knock at the door and everything, nice, handsome young man knock at the door. <laughs> and, and, and then he said, oh, baby, sport coat come around. <laughs> Big Willie, <laughs> uh, come around, and next thing you know, uh, you come home, and then you find something that you didn't expect to see. Exactly. But you did it to yourself. Exactly. Okay, you did it to yourself. Exactly. Because you can push your spouse into the arms of someone else. That's yes, true. you can. That's true. Even though you, is there, uh, yes, you're right, sir. Yes, they had a choice. You're right. They right. But. It's important that you as the man protect your wife from a situation like that. It's very, very important. Bedella? Oh, next topic. Oh, the next one. The yes, next one the is, next which, what number are we on? Number seven. Number seven. Number seven, a silent partner. Being a silent partner. Mm. You marry and you're silent. You, I mean, uh, you, when you come home, you don't talk. You don't say nothing. You mute. Hi. 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 How you doing? I'm fine. How was your day? Fine. How was things the job? Okay. And you're short, being a silent partner, not connecting 
in engaging and communicating. You know, a silent partner where you're not connecting, you're not communicating, you're not uh, filling each other. Uh, that's one of the worst things because then insecurity get in there as a silent partner to one another where you're not talking. You're sitting there watching TV. You don't talk to each other. You're in the bed. You don't talk to each other. You're at the dinner table. You don't talk to each other. You got nothing to say to each wow. other. Nothing was silent partner. You don't have nothing to wow. say to her, so she feel like she ain't got nothing to say to you. Wow. Okay, a silent partner. That will ruin your marriage. Sure as my name is Dr. Randall Hall Walker. You have to communicate. Come into the house. Hey, sweetie, how you doing? So good to see you. Come get daddy the biggest hug kiss you can. Mm. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yes. Come, come here. I missed you. And talk and communicate, but silent, sitting around. You know, there's couples that just won't talk to each other. They just won't have nothing to say to each other. They're basically roommates. They just, they just live together. But it's called a silent partner. That will end up in a divorce court because it's boring. No action. No inter, inter, interaction with each other. Life is boring. And the next thing you know, it say, hey, I'm sick of this. I got to get me a life. Okay. <laughs> and <the> next, <laughs> and so, so you want to always communicate and express yourself. Remember that song? Express yourself. Yeah. You want to express yourself to your wife. You want to express yourself to your loved one. You want to express yourself to the family. And again, we're talking about the top mm -hmm. 10 reasons why marriages fail. They fail because of no real intimacy, no real communication, no real understanding of each other. And silent partner will drive a marriage to destruction. Mm. Bradella? Yes. I recall one time we had gone out to dinner, you and I, and we were sitting, and I was just looking around at all the people, and there was this elderly couple sitting off by themselves, and they were both eating, and they had been there before we got there, and I, I, had, I kept watching them and kept watching them, and that entire time we were there, we were there for about an hour, not one word was spoken by the couple. Mm. And I told my husband, I said, I told you, I hope we never get like that. Because that is so boring. And I recall uh, some couples where the, the husband doesn't talk. He comes in. He doesn't say a word. And I just wonder how they got together in the first place and how they even dated if he's mm -hmm. not talking now. Well, generally but, something came up. Yeah. Uh, be, you know, because what happens is in a relationship, they start off good. Then they run into problems and they got unresolved issues. Mm -hmm. And the unresolved issues keep them from communicating and they don't want to say nothing to each other and it's boring and they're angry with one another and right. they haven't forgiven mm -hmm. one another. And they, so they got nothing to say. So, right. so they're a silent partner. And they just got used to that. But it's that to me is very lonely. That would be to know you have someone in the house with you, a live body right there with you mm -hmm. and you are the loneliest person in the world. Yeah. That has to be a horrible position yeah. to be in. So whatever happened to, to put the partner on mute, they have to find a way to unmute it right. so that they can, they can communicate and bring to the forefront what shut them down because something shut them down. Well, one of the things you yeah. can do, let me, let me help you, is watch a comedy movie. You know, something that's funny. Don't walk, watch nothing serious. And for God's sake, don't watch Jagged Edge, okay? Uh, for you that don't know that, uh, that movie, you don't want to watch nothing like that, okay? <laughs> All right, you want to watch a movie that, that you can la both laugh together. Because right. laughter is like medicine. It'll right. heal your heart if you la uh, watch something funny uh, with comedy. Watch something together and laugh with each other. And you'll see then, then you'll begin to build that 
healing in the marriage, healing in the relationship. You know, don't watch The Godfather and nothing movie like that, okay? That's not what you don't want. No kind of, and, and, and don't watch Crime Watch together. You know, you don't want to watch anything like that. You want to watch something that's really funny, the hilarious, and together, we'll sit down and enjoy one another, laugh together. And you'll see that, that as you laugh together, your hearts will begin to gel together and mesh together, and you guys will build your relationship relationship back back again that'll help you that would really or even help. yeah so even a, a love story that something may spark yeah inside of them that will make them cuddle and 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 it change their life and they may not well, know men, what happened but it would be a good thing to do it would men that now see that's my wife talking there right so what she's saying is that you watch that love story with your wife Cause I know how we men are. We don't want to watch no love story. A chick, uh, 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 a chick flick. I got that totally. Okay, uh, I'm not there. I'm not there. But I do it with my wife because she likes them kind of chick flicks. And so I'll sit down and I try my very best to stay to the end. Okay, uh, and watch it with her because that's what she desires and that's that's connecting with her. So I just wanted to give you the flip side of that, man, because I, I know where you at the moment she said that. I ain't sitting down watching no uh, uh, chick flick about no love, romance, you know, kind of thing. I want some action. I mean, I want, you know, action Jackson, you know. <laughs> so I got that totally, okay. But there is a time where she'll enjoy you watching a, a good chick flick with her. That's right. That's right. That's right. Number eight. Number eight. We are ready for number eight. We are ready for number eight. Amen. <laughs> number eight. Um, let me see. I can't remember what number eight. Let me look here. Number eight is. What is number eight? Well, let's let's begin to call her. Oh yes, yeah. that's or, it. That's it. Yeah. Number eight. Begin to call her names. Wow. What kind of Use. names? Sweet names. I almost, I can't say it. You. Sweet names. No, 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 no. We, <laughs> we're not talking about. Oh, sweet we're names. talking about. You're calling her bad names. Bad names. Begin, oh, that's horrible. Begin to call her. Start names. Start calling her bad names. I can't names. even say it. The one that came to my mind. Oh you, dear. You fill in the blank. You blank. Okay. Mm, wow. That's you are headed for divorce court. Yes. Uh, you are definitely on your way when you begin to call her names and call her so give I'll me some names. names give me some names and oh i that, not. Uh, you can't they, stupid uh, oh, I, okay Leah, we'll say clean okay stupid idiot yeah dummy uh you're you're you ignorant yeah retarded <laughs> these are things that the moment you start calling her names degrading yeah. her you, your marriage is in serious trouble. Right. But that's how you end up in divorce court when you begin to call them out of their name mm -hmm. and lose respect for them and not honor them. And so often that can easily happen when we're angry. You know, it's, they didn't do something right. They were, didn't pay a bill. You told them to pay the bill and they didn't pay the bill. Then you got a late notice and you, you know, think finances is tight. So you're angry. So you see, boy, that was stupid. You are so stupid. And that's the worst thing you can do to your spouse is to degrade them, tear mm -hmm. them down and speak uh, ugly towards them and call them different names out of their, out of their name because then you wound them. And let me tell you something, a woman scorned when she's angry and when she's abused and when she's hurt. You know how a kitty cat is pushed against the corner? Okay. You know how a kitty cat says, and he comes out fighting. Well, guaranteed she's going to come out fighting. You know, remember that song back in the day? There's a thin line between hate. It's a thin line. Because she can flip the script on you and lose it on you by you calling her names. You know, so many young men and old alike have lost their lives disrespecting women. Mm -hmm. And they have grabbed guns, they have grabbed knives, they have grabbed weapons, and people have lost their lives because of name calling. Right. Yeah. Calling people out of their names. And they say, I ain't taking this no more. Enough is enough. And they lose it. So you got to be respectful. So one of the top 
lessons that we can learn is not to call our wives out of their name. Always call them beautiful. Sunshine. My darling, darling baby. My sweet and sexy lady. Begin to always build them up and encourage them because again, they are the weaker vessel. And so we want to be an encouragement to them. We want to strengthen them. We want to build them up. And we want them to know that they're loved and appreciated. That's good. Right. That's good. Adult? All right. There is a, a, a little poem that we all learned as kids. And it said, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt. That's not true. Names will wow, kill you. Good. Names that's... will break yes, your spirit. Yes. Names are like someone taking an axe to a, a beautiful tree and chopping it up. Wow. That's what names are like. Names hurt. They destroy your spirit. The woman mm. begins to believe what you say. You call her stupid, she's going to begin to say, well, you said I was stupid. So she starts doing things or she does nothing. You have broken her down until her spirit is almost paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And that, that is a bad place to be because either she's going to do, she's going to do one of several things. There's so many variables. One, again, like you said, she'll pull a gun and kill you because oh she's had God. enough. <laughs> and she doesn't care about going to prison because she feels like you've destroyed her life anyway. What does she have to lose? What does she care? And not thinking again that he belongs to somebody. He's somebody's son. He's yes. somebody's cousin, somebody's sister, somebody's brother. That matters no more because of what you did to mm. her. Or she just walk away from the marriage. Or she kills herself because oh my you told her she was worthless. Wow. You told her she had nothing. You told oh. her you do not realize what mm. names will do. It only takes one name that can be that major blow wow. against her very spirit, against her very wow. soul. So men have to be careful where this is coming out of you, the anger, the hatred. And that's what she feels, you hate her. Wow. And since you hate me, what do we have here? And, and you hear about it, you hear murder-suicide. Yes. You hear the husband come home, she's killed herself. Yeah. You hear he's, he's, uh, he comes home, she's gone. The divorce, so many different things happen because of name calling. Yes. And you have pinned that name on her, you branded her, you made her less than what she was when she married you. When she married you, she was your sweetheart. She was your darling, darling baby. Yes, that's But right. now she's all these other things and, the f and having to flip her like that. It, it really destroyed her. Wow. So men have to be careful when they do that. Yeah, that's very good. Listen, did you hear what she just said? It would be sad if you knew you were responsible for your wife taking her life mm -hmm. because of the name calling. And again, we're going to flip the script on our next show and deal with the women. But today, men, wouldn't it be horrible to know that you were so instrumental to discourage them and cause them that they took their life, they overdosed, wow. they took some pills, or they got a gun and blew their brains out, or slit their throat, or slit their wrists and bled to death because of the names you call them. I'm just saying, we might be extreme here today, but we're concerned about your marriage. And I want to take a moment just to pray for couples. I want to take a moment just to pray as uh, we look in, I want my wife to look in the camera there, and we're going to just take a moment and pray. You might have a spirit of suicide upon you right now, and you might be getting ready to uh, take your life because of the names that people have called you, and you feeling so inadequate. And it reminds me of the story of the man that was in the graveyard. The scripture talks about he was cutting himself. He wanted to die. He wanted to give up. Life was miserable. He lived in the graveyard. We, he didn't have any clothes on. And, and he was insane. He had lost his mind. And he was constantly uh, just very upset with life. It was miserable. He was very unhappy. And 
The scripture says that he saw Jesus afar off. And when he saw Jesus, he ran to him. So today, I want you to run to Jesus. If you're in that situation right now that you're wanting to take your life, you want to commit suicide, you want to give up, you want to throw in the towel, life for you has dealt you a lemon. Well, we're going to pray that you put some sugar in it and make lemonade today. So stretch your hand. We're going to pray with you right now. Studio audience, uh, you all pray with me and come alive and let's pray together. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for that hurting person. Right now, we ask in the name of Jesus that healing will come to their heart. Lord God, the disappointment of life, the anger, the frustration of life. We ask right now for the healing power of God to touch them in Jesus' name. Well, listen, we are almost out of time, but we got to cover these last uh, uh, last two. Yes. Uh, uh, very, very important. And here's, here's, here's very important to say to her that if you don't like it, you can leave. If you don't like it, hit the door. Wow. Let the doorknob hit you where the dog should have bit you. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what can happen. Wow. That's what can happen when we become angry and resentful towards our wives. And then we wonder why we end up in divorce court. It's because of the way we handle them, because we treat the way we treat them. We have to love our spouse. We have to care for them. We have to nurture them. We have to encourage them. We have to build them up. We have to build their confidence up that we're there for them, that we love them and we have their best interests at heart. But to say, hey, in other words, get out. I don't care where you go. Uh, if you don't like it, leave. If you don't like it, get out. To be that cruel, to be that, that mean, and then you wonder why your marriage ends in a divorce court. Bradella? Either he's doing it because he thinks she can't leave or she's that dependent upon him or he's just being cruel. But if you give most women that ultimatum, she's going to take it. That's right. Most of the time, if you give She'll a person take it. an ultimatum, they're going to choose it they're in the best that. interest against you. Against yes. you. Yes. Most of the time. Yes. If you give a person, you say either this way or that, they're not going to choose in your best interest. No. They're going to choose in the best interest to you. Whenever right. you. Remember that. Whenever you give a person an ultimatum, they're going to choose it against you. They're not going to choose it for right. you. Right. Because right. why, why would you want to remain in a situation like that when it's, it's as though he doesn't want you anyway? He's saying to you, you can leave. Right. And you're sitting there like, wow, I married this man, but, but he's saying. And eventually, she's going to condition her mind to leave. Wow. Well, listen, we are just about out of time. Mm -hmm. Yes, give the Lord a big hand. The last one, guess what the last one is? To remain the state of jerk that you are. <laughs> if you stay the same, just the way you are, you're going to lose your wife. So I'm going to encourage you today to change. And I want to pray with you now. we got to get ready to go. We're out of time. This has been an exciting show. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. This is my darling, darling, baby, Fidel Hall Walker. And I'm excited, ignited, students, and infused to be on the show today. You are watching by way of television. Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. What a joy it is to come to you by way of television and share with you Journey to Greatness broadcast. If we're being a blessing to you, would you be so kind to consider going to our website and giving a generous gift so we can stay on the air? Go to fwccharlotte.com and click on Give and support the ministry so we can stay on the air. Thank you so very much and wish God's very best to you.